Right then, welcome back to our recordings of Candle Wax Violet and Violet is the first book in the series and as you understood our themes are 13 in number today I'm going to discuss the theme number D which is the fourth theme called Wonders of the World a little background in a minute that as a skill ready person if you do not know about the world around you perhaps you're not a global ambassador I always talk example of Jack Ma the founder of Alibaba.com and coincidentally from China he was rated the highest in a GQ quotient when you say GQ quotient GQ quotient means global quotient somebody who's aware of the global world so if you are a geography person like I am even before you talk about the wonders of the world you can do a small game on naming the seven wonders of the world where they are located why are they wonders and if you do a little google search or a wikipedia search you will not only find seven wonders of the world you will find seven new wonders and seven old wonders of the old for example Taj Mahal of course is in both but there are a lot of new wonders like the statue of Jesus Christ or Christ the Redeemer in Rio which is a new wonder of the world so you, your game can involve the naming of the seven new and the old wonders of the world and that's very very good game you can start with this new and old wonders of the world would be a small game they can find out and you can have a great theme so quickly naming them the old wonders would be hanging garden of babylon or the mausoleum of rome or the lighthouse of alexandria of course the pyramids come in and there are a lot of new ones i just mentioned about some of the new wonders that you talk about what is my current theme talking about so if you look at d1 d2 and d3 so the next three pages d1 to 3 talks about great wall of china now i just mentioned jack ma it connects so well that one of the most impressive structures and irresistible fortress is the great wall my first page is nothing but a simple coloring exercise what I would love the child to do is they can make a camouflage great wall so if you see the brown mountains the great wall stands so beautifully little light brown shades what kind of stones are used for great wall what kind of structure is it how big great wall is you can talk about it a small fact a trivia of great wall is this is for over 4500 miles now that number is is so big you cannot understand what i'm talking about so in a simple way great wall is longer than the distance between new york to california by over thousand miles forget that if you're in india it is like going from mumbai to chennai 10 times and still great wall is bigger mumbai to chennai perhaps the distance is around 250 kilometer uh, miles and we are looking uh, sorry thousand miles and great wall is four and a half thousand so we are looking at huge numbers we are looking at numbers where you are looking at a wall that was constructed which is amazing who constructed the wall the great emperor Hong Li constructed the wall and I've, in D2 you have a simple map of China where the flag of China is there, there is a dragon there is a panda there is the rivers so you can actually find out that China in simple ways is protected by Mongolia which is a great Gobi desert on top there is there is this Himalaya mountains on the other side right so it is almost an impregnable fortress the country China but there's one area that was exposed and Empire Hun decided to make a wall so China is protected completely it's a great lesson that the students need to know when I did a small game on Great Wall with a child, I got these dominoes and I asked them to make a whole list of dominoes. You can buy a set of dominoes, you can have these small wooden blocks, the dominoes, right? And these wooden blocks are great for them to just make and then with one push, the whole block should fall down. It, it just makes for a nice activity, a nice game and the students will enjoy doing it. Then you can talk about the Ming Dynasty. They use limestone and tiles and how the builders would have built up. There are 300,000 soldiers and 500,000 laborers making that. What an amazing structure this is. So the Great Wall represents strength and you can talk about strength. So imagine, can Hulk break it? Now the Avengers is a big thing. So can the Avengers break the Great Wall of China? Or why would you want to break the Great Wall of China? Who can walk through the Great Wall? and a lot of activities around I have got a given a maze to you so you can just look at the Chinese products and Chinese things 
anything about this wonder would be wonderful you can talk about using students hold hands and can they make a great wall and the hand should not be you know it's a little violent exercise so i don't want you to do but they can push each other you just using the force of the hand and the team that you know it's like more like a tug of war but only pushing with hands and there's a line whoever crosses the line first wins or loses so it's a physical activity strength and we teach children that one of the skills that they need is also physical strength my side point on them is exercise today we would like that the best of the entrepreneurs the best of the skill people today are very healthy people they run a mile they do swim they they are they are great marathon runners they cycle so we would ask them what kind of exercise that regime you have and challenge them to do good exercise every day even if it is for 7 minutes and there is an app called 7 minutes workout you can show the app to them you can actually do that app you can download the app the 7 workout and for one everybody does the workout together it's a great workout it's great fun that is your d1 to d3 exercise what is d4 d4 and 5 is about the national animal of china and that is the panda now when i say panda of course the exercise is very simple that i can talk a lot about panda to them so you know they just rear in the word panda is a very popular animal but can they tell me about the ecosystem the environment that panda is living in panda loves to eat bamboos right and uh, pandas are beautiful black and white animal two questions around black and white list 10 animals that are black and white now that's a little exercise it'll be fun so we are looking at naturalist learners it's a critical thinking exercise so can you can you tell me some animals that are black and white and we will be wonderful in that now remember don't give me generic animals for example a cow black and white cow i'll accept it because that's a specific jersey cows but don't tell me a black and white cat because you know cats can be a mixed color so give me give you stop this tape tell me a name of black and white animal i'll tell you some of course the panda remember orca the killer whale so that's black and white zebra is the first letter that come to you a white tiger has black stripes so that's acceptable a black and white animal is allowed some more now we got a little difficult isn't it some more animal okay you can google it but then there is a tapir it is it is it's like something like a pig with a extra you know extra nose so that's black and white i love animals so i can tell you shrunk it's like a really bad ant eater that's black and white uh, perhaps uh, some snake specific snakes are black and white it's okay and of course the penguin and one of the most popular dog that is black and white is the dalmatian i don't know if i gave you 10 or not but i i give you a kind of num- names that are black and white another question that you can ask is panda is you see on d5 you have some logos so what are the popular logos associated with panda and the kids can identify a panda food panda so it's fun and tell them why do you think they identified panda and food so panda is known to have big belly and that big belly takes me to kung fu panda and kung fu panda is a is the national animal of china china is the country where the kung fu as as a martial arts originated from so they thought that why are, a, are other animals were good so all the other animals in the in the movie if you look at the movie they are they are one of the moves of kung fu so it's tigeress or viper or monkey or the praying mantis or the cricket now panda is not known to be a great kung fu master and yet he becomes the best of it the master shifu if you're popular kung fu manda or the white peacock third episode you can talk that there is nothing called a secret sauce is the effort that you put in the third logo is of the logo of wwf world wildlife federation it's an animal conservation group and i love the logic behind the logo choice you look they had lot of animals the reason they chose panda and you can ask this to your children is Number one, it's an endangered species, and the endangered means it's critical. A rhino is an endangered species. Tigers are endangered species. So why did they pick out panda and not rhino and tiger? No, China did not pay them to do it. They picked up this because they said, since we are environmentally conscious, panda being black and white, even when we give color printouts, the printout would still be black and white. And this is so wonderful, isn't it? 
it is like a sense of environmental and conservation together so i love this idea there is lot of talking but i give you some ideas of asking them questions on the animal names the kung fu panda animal or ten black and white animal and you can do maybe one more game you can make is make one more logo for any company which should have panda as is icon as a symbol and why so it could be a software company an electricity company it could be a new office it could be a leather good anything you can choose but why or it could be a stationery it could be school name so i think there is a company called red panda as well there is a company about panda they should name it it's a great exercise for their young skill entrepreneurs to come up with the last exercise in the china series is d6 and this is one of my favorite exercises which is a very simple one which says china as a country is huge today what started as made in china was supposed to be plagiarized cheap fake good until china decided that we are such a big country made in china should be popular as the best country in the world i'll give a little story that you can share with your students when world war 2 was on british good was supposed to be the best Japanese good because my grandmother lived in Burma where Japanese goods were very common were known to be fake so a britisher would make a clock or a comb japan would copy and it would be the cheapest thing available today japan decided no will not be cheap anymore and they are like you know cars like toyota and lexus and nissans japanese goods are best what japan was during world war 2 1945 to 1950 china became later until 2000 Year 2000, there was a revolution in China where China decided to make the best product, and today the world goes to China. From Toys R Us to Ford Motors, all of them go to China to make their products there. Who got this great change? Among others, there is a name called Jack Ma. Jack Ma, as I just mentioned before the start of it, is the founder of Alibaba.com, one of the largest e-commerce. It is three times bigger than. amazon.com so you can show a picture of jack ma tell a story that he was a teacher and a and a tour guide who was translating the americans business proposal in mandarin to the chinese in two years he learned so much that he started his own company so you as young students have opportunities language learning is one of them understanding the opportunity and seizing it today made in china is supposed to be good so now here are some of the products which are chinese in nature can they identify it so there is a symbol called yin and yang which is on the flag of south korea there is a chinese buddhist temple a chinese temple there is the smiling buddha the dragon the pagoda the mandarin flag the stones in china the chopsticks are there chinese make some great herbal tea and of course the chow mein which is actually you know not so chinese but adulterated outside the dress that the chinese wear now since they identify a lot of things that belong to china can they tell me 10 things which are made in china which they can find in the home or around you and that's a great exercise because a lot of electrical thing your shoes your clothes your accessories your watches your television would be made in china so go allow the ch child the student to find out you can do a little background work what are the common made in china things in your home and this would be great you know on a side joke we tell the china is so good and so proud of itself it gave itself five stars on the flag they will, this way they'll never forget the flag of china there are five stars on the flag of china now why are the five stars on flag of china if i can ask you what do you think well this the largest star symbolizes the communist party and the four smaller stars are the four social classes the working class the peasant class the urban elite and the national class it's just the china's new democracy policy but on a side note that's what china is all about i hope you enjoy doing this exercise on china and they really have the gq which i said the global quotient high when do the wonders of the world thank you so much you can ask your suggestion and tell us pictures of what you did in china and we love to know how it you made it better than what we shared with you bye bye hello and welcome today's theme we are talking about is civic sense and the sub theme is nation building how is a nation built yes one brick at a time cleaning one plastic at a time now while civic sense may be a very large topic to talk about 
we have broken it down into something tangible and a aspect where the students may feel a part of them to be involved in. So if you look at my first two themes, E1 is my first activity for civic sense and the entire activity called Up the Hill is basically about a small poem and a take on the poem. So remember Jack and Jill went up the hill. Now here instead of fetching a pail of water, they are shocked to see what others have done to the hill. So a simple concept that we are turning into is they will be reminded of the poem. You might play with the words Jack and Jill and what they see on top. Instead of just telling them, be, you know, anticipate, build up the anticipation and explain to these two uh, group of children that these two children are shocked. What could shock them? What is it that they have not sensed? And what happened is the entire hill is filled with plastics and cans of Pepsi and, and you know, papers, rubbish. The, the packets of lays and what we can do now here is the key skill we are developing among the children is self-awareness. Today we are not aware of our surrounding. One of the best ways to be a part of the entire cleanliness campaign in any nation is first to make them see the dirt. So the activity on self-awareness, you can start listing down 20 things you find on the road that people are careless about. And believe me, your children should be made to think about it. From small things like cigarette butts, to spitting on the road, to throwing plastic or even paper or plastic cans, plastic bottles, uh, cans of Pepsi and Coke. Suddenly the students are aware of how the entire nation is made into a garbage. Now, every theme, the reason of doing this with you is we explain what can the sub activity be. This is an entire activity that you're going to play the whole class, the whole one period on. My sub activity, after I made a list of 20 dirty things or 20 things that make the, uh, the, the streets uh, dirty or the hill for Jack and Jill dirty, I go and start talking about something like water logging. Water logging is one of the major issues in metro cities across India. You know, Chennai, the entire streets are waterlogged. Mumbai, after one of the rains, 26-11, was the most dangerous thing. Even Mumbai can remember that the entire city was in deluge, drowned. A new word for students. Perhaps you can talk about deluge itself and compare to the Ark of Noah. Today's Noah's Ark uh, is not a, a boat coming in, but we become the crusaders. We become the evangelists for not using plastic. So we can take it a plastic ban. I know a friend of mine uh, who said a lovely anecdote that in Titanic, the, the hero had his arms stretched like Jesus perhaps and he was sailing in the boat in the, in the entire ship. Today you can go to any streets of Bangalore or Mumbai and stretch your arm and you will see that the water will flow in the same way. The reason I'm mentioning every single piece of program is for you to use this in your conversation with the children. I know humor is very difficult to get, but can we make a sarcastic humor for students to pick up and understand? So could a student make a small project on why is plastic clogging the drains? So if you look at Mumbai as an example, when you use plastic and you discard the plastic, the plastic get, does not get disposed. And because it does not get disposed, this plastic starts blocking the drains. And when the drains are jammed or blocked and the pores are not there, instead of water seeping down, the water starts flooding the area, the streets. And this leads to major crisis. They are, what are five things that has caused this problem? What are the other things? One is a traffic jam, the immense traffic jam. Bigger problem than traffic are the diseases that you are spreading across. The entire area is infected with, with more and more dirt that you see that's going on. And one plastic leads to more clogging. That's my th fourth point. So what you're doing is you're creating a scenario what happens. So traffic, disease, dirt, more clogging. And of course, you are looking at an entire mess around that needs now. After the rain even stops, the water clogging remains. In Bangalore, there is a huge case study where the cars, you know, they are... They are uh, under uh, 
underground car parking in some of the uh, homes and all and entire cars you know a car is a car it could be audi or a nano and the cars were drowned and completely destroyed because of the water logging so it's such a small aspect that we're talking about nation building jack and jill goes up the hill and you can do an entire activity around this is your e1 as we talking about let us go a little further and start speaking about the next topic i'm talking is chapter number e2 and e3 so e2 and e3 these two pages combine one activity as again as a part of nation building and where we are talking about let's waste now of course the very idea of let's waste as a concept is referring to how do you segregate the waste now remember there is a connection between the activity 1 that you did and activity 2 where you actually telling children that now since you are not going to dirty your roads how are you going to even separate the waste there are so many schemes that the government have introduced unfortunately a lot of us have ignored it and the idea of using two bins for a dry bin and a wet bin has not been completely implemented despite a lot of appeals and promo so now for side a side activity as i always say a smaller mini project within the project besides separating the two waste would be can they make collectively make an advertisement the students do a role play on making an advertisement where they teach people that how wonderful it would be to separate the two kind of a waste a resource that i will really require before you begin the activity is collect as many waste material for the last one week from your home and hopefully you're doing it much before so you know and you see the picture is so clear you will be able to create an entire dry and wet waste the students the wet is the more difficult part but you can bring eggshells banana leaf uh, skin the leftover fruits you can uh, bring tea bags or tea leaves that are left any fruits any vegetable leftover even rice leftover so of course things that are very not very smelly or sticky but still you can carry them around are a part of your wet waste dry waste is anything from the cans the bottles the shampoo sachets the plastics that you leave behind the the tetra packs the papers the cardboards the clips the discarded pens and we can do an entire activity or a game on wet and dry waste perhaps even better would be why don't they write down 15 things that are actually a part of wet and dry waste as they make a list of it in their own houses now because this is my activity number two i'm going to teach them something on decision making so the skill i'm teaching them is decision making because they are making a decision on which is a wet waste and which is a dry waste remember the skills this is only a main skill or the primary skill as in primary color there can be tons of smaller minor skills also that could be attached to it for example this very activity could be coping with emotions because you know only those who are strong emotionally would not actually pollute the places they live in if you look at my e3 page there is a third can so what we are saying is when you are outside in mall you usually see three different distinct boxes or bins and these bins are very nicely color coded while the colors may not exactly be the way it is but see paper is colored and the extreme right as blue glass and plastic bottles are to be kept in red and yellow is meant for drink cans which is anything to be tin or anything that is aluminium foil so what you can do is how can these students think about these being separated and why don't they separate it for la next one week from your activity and bring it maybe you can give a challenge as a team divide the class into two teams and the team that brings these three things so now we are not doing wet and dry that you have brought to the class but next week the ones who bring maximum of the of these and we will weigh them so instead of that's how garbage or waste is not it's not you know how you segregate by weighing it so you are going to weigh them and the team that has maximum weight which weighs the the waste is maximum will be the winner it will be interesting and they will be collecting it and we will weigh three things separately so it will be for example let's say one team has a lot of drink cans so they win one zero the other one has got plastic bottles too many and they have they weigh more so it's one one and the third one is one team this first team again gets a lot of paper so it's two one and the, the first team won the score two one then 
Uh, another sub theme out of it is what are the recycled thing you can use in your house? Really nice. So in the Gulf, I, when I was in Dubai, there was an entire exercise gone that people have discarded mobile phones in their home. So they were asked, petrol pump said, whenever you come for fill, refill fuel, drop in your old discarded mobile phones and make sure you format them before you discard them. But they could be used in lesser uh, technology rich areas like some places of Africa, some places of Asia and these mobiles with, uh, with basic network can be used. Maybe the students can make a list of three recycled things we use at home. For example, our paper in our books, textbooks is a lot of recycled. Another amazing aspect of recycle is the jerseys of the footballer. So Brazil in the World FIFA World Cup wore the jersey and the French team wore the jersey which was made from recycled plastic bottles. So isn't it amazing? This is a great fact for students to go and research about. So the football jerseys of the Messi's and yes, Barca also use a little plastic, but they can check it. They were used plastic bottles that the jerseys are made of. Of course, some things which cannot be recycled, which is why you should be very judicious in the use uh, is, is your glass, which takes longer to decompose. So you better take care of these things. Maybe switching on, we had done that in our electricity part, but again, you can remind them on switching on easier form of energy, like LED lights instead of the normal tube light can also save the environment. So this brings an end to our second activity on nation building, E2 and E3, which is about let's waste. The third activity in the entire series of nation building and civic sense is something that is so common and so common yet we never talk about it. These are small elephants in the room. Of course, we are talking about a dog right now. So page E4 and E5 is actually talking about dog walk. What is a dog walk? Well, there is a small case study about Andrew uncle who takes his dog for a walk and the dog is made to defecate in open. Well, of course, dogs don't have to defecate in toilets or designated areas. But imagine you leave the dog poop outside near your car, near your building, somebody steps on it. So why don't instead of starting with a very, very, uh, again, preachy mode, why don't we start on a little humorous and a funny mode? So we'll ask the teams, we'll divide them into two or three teams and say, think of a scenario where anybody, it could be anyone who's taking a dog his or her dog for a walk and the dog has pooed in public and what happens next somebody steps on it a school child falls on it somebody stiffen falls into it a car you know jumps over it and, and splashes around let them be as gory as possible it will be fun part of what you're doing in a subject it's a whole period you're going to talk about it and remember when they're talking about the dogs remember to remind them to also name the breed of the dog so we're doing a subplot here what dog breeds you can think of and also even whatever dog, it could be a Pomeranian, it could be a, a Doberman, an Alsatian, a Dalmatian, it could be a Husky, it could be a St. Bernard or a, you know, a German Shepherd or a Golden Retriever. Let them also name the dog. So this is interesting. Uh, we, we can have an entire scenario where every student can come and present a scenario where everybody laughs or it's a little humorous thing and what happens after that. Now, when the students have done a part of public speaking, which is actually effective communication, but the entire this activity, the skills that we use is actually empathy. The reason being, we almost taught the children what happens when dog poop is left behind. So the question we asked in the last line of E4 is, do people actually pick up the dog poop? And of course, you know, most of us do not pick up or the ones who walk the dog. So the students now will have to create a poster which will convey the message that do not leave the dog poop outside. So you see there is a sample poster with a man with a leash and the dog is there and the poop is thrown away. It could be even more uh, clear if the poster is not and every student creates a chart and a group of children creates multiple posters. Here, the idea is not two teams creating two posters because a part of the activity is the students will take the poster and they'll stick it where the dogs actually are made to poo. So we are going to do a real nation building outside of the classes where the students will stick those posters. So make sure your posters are very nice, very clear. You can even write a message there on the poster and 
Now, there's a question which is asking them, is Uncle Andrew doing the right thing Why picking up the poo? Of course, he's doing the right thing. It's the civic thing to do. That's the civic sense we want to teach them about. So what else can we help people with? So you can also ask the students to not only stick the poster, start, you know, leaving few plastic bags of course, now this should be disposed well, but you have those plastic bags. So uh, anybody whose dog poos can pick up a bag, snap it from the poster and use it to pick it up. Maybe the students can give small cards. Thank you for cleaning our streets with a dog poop. Now, an uh, offhand critical thinking question is, what about the stray dogs? Ask the question, make it open-ended. Not every question have to have the solution inside the class, but you have enough conversation and activity for students to work on. So this brings us to an end of the entire theme, the National Building Civic Sense of Candle Violet. Hello and welcome to our Candle Wax Violet. And we are on our theme F. This is the sixth theme on character building. And among the most important character building ability is honesty. Now, a lot of times when we teach honesty to our children, believe me, we, uh, we can ask them to say, I will not tell a lie, I will not tell a lie. And they write 100 times. But the first instant they get an opportunity, they lie. Or perhaps what we call a white lie. They didn't intend to do any harm, but they still lied. That would be the start of your conversation with the students on what honesty means in today's world. Using honesty, we are trying to do a lot of skills. My first part is F1 and F2. And I'm going to teach them a skill of how do you take up responsibility, which is also the theme that we will talk about in our next theme. Let's say you are entering a super messy room. And the first thing you will do is with the children, I'll go to my F2 and I'll speak about what a super messy room looks like. So let them have a look at a room right now and let them tell me why is it messy. The bed is not made, the clothes are all thrown over, the dustbin almost looks empty, there is a table which is full of you know gadgets or things. Do they see such kind of super messy things around them in their own house? Perhaps kitchen is messy which shows the one who is in charge of the kitchen is not doing a good job. We as adults, our file cabinets are messy, our wardrobes are messy, our email is cluttered, our laptops and our apps. And that's a great way of talking that messiness is not always physical. If you look at a mobile phone, the first page is covered with apps you don't use. So before you want to start and if you're talking to little elder children, ask them if they use a mobile phone, one of the best ways is can they remove five apps from the home screen which they don't use. And there are always apps that you don't use. Even if they don't, draw a mobile phone and ask them to guess what are the common home screen apps you see which perhaps you should not be having them. For example, I had a friend who went through this exercise and we saw that we put a simple co uh, called alarm clock. You don't need alarm clock because the timer itself is an alarm clock. You click on the timer, you can go to the alarm there. So there are many things that you don't need and you use it because we don't know the other use of it. So that's my first messiness exercise I'm going to talk about. How does it relate to honesty? The part about honesty is now your mother entered your room or somebody's room because you know you are a judge and you see three different characters who could be the culprits. My character one who could be culprit is a beautiful huge St. Bernard dog. Could it be dog who messy the room or my second character so the dog is Timmy my second character is a teddy bear which is Teddy and that's the name I've chosen for it of course you know Teddy would not have done it Teddy perhaps is a part of a mess thrown around but Teddy is not a living thing it would not have done it and the third one is a little boy whose room it is Tom now it's all about simple guessing and we are the Toms in our daily lives but do you admit to it? Here is a great time to introduce the story of Pinocchio. It's a very popular story of Pinocchio where as soon as he lied, his nose started growing and it started inching further and further. And at one point, Pinocchio's nose was longer than a normal scale you see. So this is the story from where we got the word Pinocchio effect. The moment you lied, your nose will grow. 
Actually, if you know a story of Bill Clinton, president, when he was lying, he started touching his nose. Why do people touch their nose when they lie? According to a scientific research, there is a biochemical reaction that happens in our hormones, in our bodies, and there is an itching sensation when you lie. So, it, you try to touch your nose to reduce the itching sensation, which is a sign of a dishonest person. Of course, this exercise is a very simple, most of the exercises are conversational. I use the mobile app as one key thing. This can be extended to draw a mobile and let them guess what, how many apps they have. Now, this could be done with any grader. Grade 10 or grade 1, they all understand mobile. Let them think what kind of apps are on the home screen of, say, your home screen. Maybe you can show the app to them You can, and then they can say, what, could, what apps are there? Let me give a list of 10 apps that are usually there on people's mobile phone. WhatsApp for sure, Facebook most likely, it is a gallery section, then you have phone, then you have Google, then you have an alarm clock, you have a camera, you have Swiggy, you have Zomato, you have Uber, you have Paytm, you have Calendar, you have Amazon Prime, you have some kind of school transport system, you have a music app, you have a Hotstar, you have Airtel, you have Geo, and then you realize you have so many apps perhaps that you don't need. So now you can clutter them and put them into small pockets, entertainment apps, apps that are only information, news apps, apps that are daily news, big basket and groffers and paytms. This is an idea of how you take super messiness from a room to a super messiness from a daily digital life. Hope this exercise F1 and F2 will give you a lot of idea of decluttering your life. How does it relate to honesty? And then our three story of Timmy or Teddy or Tom, Tom takes some responsibility of his own room and you don't only do that, you also give us three suggestions how you will unmessy your room or how you will declutter your space. My F3 is a more conversational exercise, F3 and F4 is about five honest statements you can talk about yourself. You know, you can talk about the story of George Washington as, as a little boy, had he went around and and hatched down a lot of trees and his father taught a lesson that once things are broken down they cannot be bought up you know so remember that you know at least you were you he told truth and instead of it's just in our teacher's manual you can take a lot of stories any story and honesty will work here so bring up a story and tell them this is also about you conveying an idea of what you want to be I have given some statements in F4 and you can actually discuss each statement in detail. So is it an honest statement about you, I am an early riser. So you know they can discuss, you. what do you mean by an early riser, someone who gets up at 6 o'clock or someone who gets up at 8 o'clock. Early riser means you get up on your own or your parent wake you up. Do you need an alarm clock to get up? So these are things you can use as, as a starter and then they can tick up. A even more interesting way of doing an honesty thing is you write H for honesty, L for lie and M for maybe. So you don't know and then you may just give us a point, five points for honesty and if you are lying and you are still telling that you are lying, I will still give you a one point and for maybe I will give you a three pointer. Let's see at the end of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 statements can we get a score of at least 30 plus. So this is what we do. So a 30 plus is a, is a statement that shows that you are honest about it. A less than 30 is maybe you have to work on your honesty quotient. You can add one more line that people don't know and you are actually not honest about it. And these are some great conversations you can have. Watch too much television. Maybe you don't watch too much television. Perhaps you are a lot on a mobile phone. So I can go to another statement which is just before the fourth one before the end says demand for a mobile phone. How many of you have demanded for your own mobile phone, you demand to use a parent's mobile phone? When you use a parent's mobile phone, how much time do you use it for? When you say 15 minutes, do you end up in 15 minutes or you always exceed your time? These could be great conversational starters. I wash my own socks, I wear my own clothes. Oh, brilliant. I think every child should learn how to polish their shoes and wash their socks. So this is a great way of telling them that be responsible for your action. Can they start doing these things? A simple thing is, do I read before going to bed? Uh, brushing is a great example in the morning and in the evening. 
a small side point about brushing is can they invest in two pair of a pair of brushes so two brushes and i usually have invested in one electronic brush which they use in the uh, in the evening it's fun you know in the morning when they have to brush anyway they can use a normal brush or it could be the vice versa so these are some statements you can give them and they will help them become an honest person and at least be honest to their own personal hygiene personal body uh, one more statement of a people relationship is help my mother respect my teachers what do you mean by respecting a teacher is it doing a homework is it saying good morning to them is it going and shaking hand to them what do you mean by helping the mother let's say you think you are helping the mother can you ask your mother what she expects from you there is a big difference between expectation and your desires so you may say i am helping my mother just by keeping my home clean she may say help means just being you know nice to her or encourage her so a lot of conversation again but with an activity like this you are already telling them about the personal self development let's go to the last exercise the third one in the f section which is f5 and f6 what is f5 and f6 about honesty is also about being brave now that's strange isn't it because telling the truth requires courage and we give an example of gandhi ji Uh, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi the father of nation uh, India is someone who is known to be honest but you don't see that honesty unless you see his life he was brave he was courageous he was honest with his principles and with this principle with PLE that he said non violence is my way of life even though he was lathi charge even though the british has put him in jail even though there were so many objections he had he said i will not revert to violence a lot of people who came after mahatma gandhi were influenced by his stand he took including martin luther king and nelson mandela people who have won nobel peace prize strange gandhi ji never won a nobel peace prize nobel committee has always regretted the decision you can discuss a forum why did they not win why did he not win why can't he give him now the reason they can't give a nobel prize now is they don't give a nobel prize to someone who has died it's called posthumous someone who has died you don't get a nobel prize after your death so that's why gandhi ji cannot get it and that's why perhaps they gave the nobel prize to malala and the indian kailash satyarthi because they wanted to make up for what they could not do of course these are many many conversations on gandhi ji's life they can actually sketch mahatma gandhi it's a nice sketch they just have to doodle it with a small you know a head that comes around like a curved umbrella and his uh, glasses very popular let them sketches it's a fun sketch they can do right they can uh, say five sentences about gandhi ji that would be wonderful he did law in london he was thrown out of a train in south africa you know uh, while india was winning the freedom he was sad because of the riots in kolkata and he was in kolkata not in delhi when uh, our first prime minister jawaharlal nehru was making a speech so many things about gandhi ji that you can talk about you can bring a book i recommend a book by cam fire which is a very graphic novel lovely uh, illustrations as in graphics and comic graphic you can read that so these are some side add ons you can use even before you talk about the honesty of gandhi ji the f6 is very ordinary i'm just using a simple sentence so dash is my country but for adults for elder children let them make an entire story around these four pictures they can enact a story they can role play they can do an extempo or an elocution but something around the story we are also including elements of public speaking so these are my three activities involving character building and my first character building is based on gandhi ji and honesty and you can use a lot more of exercises let us know what else you do we'll be happy to have your feedback and we can add on more activities based on your review thank you so much